hastily. Thanks a lot. I have uh, two questions that may or may not be related. One has to do with uh, um, the vote taken in the General Assembly yesterday uh, on the, quote, new approach to, to cholera. And I, I just want to understand your understanding of it. I've seen a story whose headline is, UN approves use of unspent funds on K Haiti's cholera uh, epidemic and says that the General Assembly voted to transfer unused funds. But it seems like the resolution, all it says is that they welcome the intention of the Secretary General to inform states right. of their ability. So what, what's the status on actually getting any funds? And is it, is, it a, is, it, is it true that this is transferring funds, or is this just welcoming his intention to inform states that they could transfer funds? I think the, um, we obviously welcome, uh, we, we were happy with the, uh, the outcome of yesterday's, uh, of yesterday's unanimous. Uh, adoption of the resolution uh, supporting the S Secretary General's suggestion to voluntarily hand over remaining funds from the budget uh, of the soon-to-be-closed uh, mission. Contributors to the peacekeeping budget will notify us within 60 days of whether they're willing to shift their share to the unspent money of the cholera fund. We hope that this will create a momentum to support the new approach focused on eliminating cholera from Haiti and increasing support for the most affected uh, communities. As, as of now, the total contribution of funds is about $2.67 million. Obviously, uh, we hope that, um, uh, we hope this is, uh, we hope this, this is increased. Is there any threshold at which the, the, the track 2B that was uh, enunciated by Ban Ki-moon would in fact be implemented? That's, that's individual reparations for families who lost their breadwinner, housing, schooling, is there some? Is there any intention to do that? And is there some level at which that would be done? Uh, I think we, we're taking one one step at a time. And the other, the possibly related question I saw in the the um, uh, schedule of the Deputy Secretary General at five o'clock today. She's meeting with us, this Amy Desai of the Clinton Foundation. I wanted to know if you could either know now or tell me after. What's the what's the topic? Is Haiti a topic? Is there another topic? I don't know. I I don't know. I'll try to figure out. Uh, I will try to let you know. Excuse okay. me, I'm just uh, sure. trying to work something out here. Just bear with me two seconds. A whistleblower case in the, in the new rule of the Secretary General. There, there's a, Emma Riley is a, is a whistleblower at the Office of High Commissioner of Human Rights, and her case was filed exactly a year ago, or, or one day short of it, July 15, 2016, but there's still no decision. At least it seems like there's a deadline for, for action on, on, on requests for, for protection. So I guess my question is, does this new policy, is it being applied retroactively back? What's the status of, 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 of whistleblowers that preexisted the, the coming into the policy? And how can you explain someone who alleged that, that her superior you know, took benefits from Morocco, turned names over to I don't know the particulars of her, of her case. Uh, and I will check on your question about the about the policy. Okay, thanks a lot. The, the, I wouldn't, I'm not asking you to hold to, to, to hold my hand as you said yesterday, but I do want to ask you again about Mr. Salome because from yesterday you said that he's going to be he's going to come by the end of the month and then he's right. going to begin shortly thereafter. But right. he's already making calls and he's already described as the envoy. So well, because, how are people uh, who deal with the UN supposed to know? Is he getting paid? Does he have immunity? These are the. Uh, I, I don't. I think he officially starts uh, early August. Uh, the man is a professional. Uh, he's not going to sit on the sidelines, and I think there's nothing wrong or unethical or in any way uh, of him um, him starting to get to, to starting to work. No, I guess I just wanted to know. I'm, just, I'm, I'm sorry because it's not it's not a question of unethical. It's just a question of if he's already the UN envoy. For example, can he spend UN funds? Is he? There, most companies don't let somebody start up without actually signing a contract. He is, he is the de facto envoy, whether right. he's my officially other started. I, my last question is this. He's in charge. To, yes. Since yesterday, you seem to say that since the head of the Office of, of South-South Cooperation had one time been in 1B, and I happened to go to the meeting and, and, and speak to him, that this is the answer on the Eng Lap Seng case. And no, no, I, I'm not saying okay. it's the answer, Matthew. I, I was answering the fact sure. that you repeatedly said you were not getting any contacts with them. Right, so and it was only because was I went answer. to a, to a that meeting was that answer. was... All so, right, but I'm my question is this. is about the Secretariat. Yes. Who was held accountable for the GA document that was modified by the Department of General Services and Conference Management to include the name of the Sun Canip Foundation and within DPI for the events held in the lobby and, I think with, and the with sponsorship it, for, of the for, slavery for, memorial. For DPI, I think the, 
the audit was clear is that there was an it was an issue of uh, of judgment. I don't think there was any malfeasance in, in any way. Uh, on the document, I don't know. Can you find out? I will get our cases ongoing. Matthew Lee, Inner City Press, on behalf of the Free UN Coalition for Access, thanks for the briefing. I wanted to, you were saying, you'd mentioned Myanmar, and so I just, it seems sometimes in this debate that the issue of like, there seems to be at least two countries in which, in which Buddhist clergy, at least, not all, but some, are involved in, in, in targeting non-Buddhists. That would be Sri Lanka as well as, as Myanmar. And I just wanted to know, what's been your engagement on that, on sort of the different strands of, of, of Buddhism? And also, the, 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 I wanted to ask you about Cameroon. I don't know if you're aware, as you speak about the, these clergy, there's a bishop there. There's a very high-profile case where an Anglophone bishop was the, 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 the Anglophone Catholic Church in the country is saying that he was murdered. He was found in a river. And it's, it's led to a lot of kind of controversy even within the same Catholic Church. So I just wanted to know, I mean, I guess I hear what you're saying about all religions are religions of peace, but are you aware of that case? Do you have any update on Burundi? Do you think that this talking with, with the, is this getting to the sort of, seems like the, 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 the it's a, maybe an ethnic or, or the government versus its opponents. But what's the, what's, what's the possibility of this religious dialogue helping things in Burundi? Thanks a lot. Well, on the first point regarding Myanmar, let me tell you that when we had the meeting for Asia Pacific, we had uh, Myanmar uh, religious leaders, Buddhists. We had also Muslim uh, who took part in the discussion. We have, of course, to realize that Myanmar is still a very difficult situation. And I'm glad that uh, the uh, rapporteur has been uh, visiting. She's, already, she's there right now. And let's encourage, really, the ongoing process. Uh, we have to make sure that also the atrocities which have been committed there are simply, of course, unacceptable. But let's see what will be the findings of the uh, commission which has been, uh, which is going to be dispatched to Myanmar. Uh, and now on the uh, point concerning, of course, uh, Burundi, uh, there is no doubt that the situation is not an easy one. And uh, we have to make every effort. Uh, Sometimes uh, we tend to think that uh, simply by issuing condemnation you can solve the problem. Where, whenever you have a possibility of a dialogue, we have to encourage that dialogue. And uh, my view is that the regional actors also have to be involved in a more, maybe in a more aggressive way, so as to find a solution. Because if solution is not found in those areas where you have a crisis, it will definitely impact on the neighboring countries sooner or later, like, like we are seeing. I mean, you have today near 400,000 uh, Burundis who are refugees in the neighboring country. I mean, it's the state South Sudan, for instance, where because of the crisis, you have more than 1.6 million uh, South Sudanese who are today uh, refugees in Uganda. I mean, take the failure of the international community in Syria, which led finally millions of people moving in the tiny kingdom of uh, Jordan and even crossing the border went to Europe. And that is why I said we need to, be, to show more solidarity. And at the end of the day, we need to simply have a world where you will have more justice, more social justice, where the inequalities will be reduced. And in that regard, I think the sustainable development goal, the sustaining peace resolution are elements which we need really to make every effort uh, to support their implementation.